In this video, I wanted to just give you a wee update on Emergent Drums by Audio Lab. Uh, version 1.4 has done a cool little addition. They've added multi outs, so each cell can have its own kind of bus out, so you will end up with 60 notes. How do we do that? How do we know what's going on? So let's come back to plugins. This time we're in Ableton Live, open VST3. I've got Audio Lab here and Emergent Drum, so we can just drag her over to a next blank area and it'll uh, pop up the new interface. Cool. Um, so we've changed the contrast a little and they've changed uh, this little icon for dragging your audio file out and just spawning a new WAV file. Cool. But what we're bothered about today is this one. So single means there's one single stereo bus and all the cells inside it, 16 of them get summed to that, and then that hits Ableton Live, as it were, right? What we're going to use is we're going to use multis. So what we'll see when we switch it to multi mode is we can still see that kick drums, uh, uh, well, we can hear it, and we can see it in the metering down here, but next door, not so much. Well, it's making its audio, we just don't have a fader to kind of pick up that audio, so to speak. So how do we do that? Dead easy. We make a new audio track, and this time we want to play around with that audio track. What we're going to do is we're going to focus here. We are going to, this time we're going to choose Emergent Drums down there, or whatever this track's called. So if I name this one uh, Smelly Feet, you'll see that that changed to Smelly Feet here. Cool. And then once we've selected which track we're trying to pick up from, we can go and find, oh, wow, there are 15 potential destinations. Obviously, output one is never available because it's here. So we can choose output two. So now what we should see is kick drum one, kick drum two, but we still can't hear it. Yeah, we can see the metering over there, though. But why we can't hear it is we're not input monitoring. We're not listening to the track's input, and the track's input is actually coming from somewhere else. So if we plop that on, then we should. Cool. Cool. And that means that we could add reverb just to this cell, if you will. Yeah. And all you'd need to do is just make another copy or duplicate this and go up by one to get the snare. So let's do that. Click on there. Command D. Right next door, we're going to pick the next output, output three. It's already monitored in because we duplicated this track. So if we come back here and we fire this one. Cool. Turn down the reverb, add some delay. Wicked. Nice one. Okay, let's delete all of this and do that Blue Peter thing of here's one I made earlier. So what we've done here is we have got the Emergent Drums main, this over here. And then I just copy and pasted, duplicated um, 16 others or 15 others, and that's the source. And then I so shift selected them all like that and made a subgroup. So now we have an Ableton Live subgroup, our source instrument, and then all of the other cells underneath, which is pretty cool. So if I open up this and I fire off some of the cells, you can see how each fader and metering goes up as we cycle through the different cells and the loaded AI generated samples there under. Cool. That means we could multi-track this, we can mix this, you know the deal. Have fun, I think, and I hope that you find this useful. If you choose so, leave a like. If you don't, that's cool too. If you want to subscribe, awesome. If you don't, that's fine. Happy patching. Make fat beats. Rawr.